Hey guys, it's time for another writing video, and I'm here to tell you that I am one mean mama. I torture my characters, and I'm here to tell you why, and why you should too. Okay, my shirt today is Scar from The Lion King, of course, because he's an asshole like me. And I'm also wearing my Fen'Haral necklace, the wolf god from Dragon Age. I apologize for the weird lighting that is going on. It is sunset, it is winter in Wisconsin, so there's just snow all over everything, and there's just some really extreme white light happening over here, and there's not really anything I can do about that, so we're just gonna have to survive, okay? Okay. This idea came along the other day when I was frustratingly spending hours trying to find a Joss Whedon quote that I never did find. If you know where it is, please send it to me because it's driving me insane. Anyway, the gist of the quote was that whenever Joss would feel like Buffy was getting too boring or too uninspired or he was getting bored with writing Buffy, he would just make her suffer more. And that made the story way more interesting. Sometimes I will be writing along and I'll think to myself, hmm, this scene is really boring. I need to hurt these people. <laughs> I usually throw in the evil laugh. I feel like it really helps my creative process. I mean, characters being happy is fine, but too much contentedness is really boring. Why do you think so many books stretch out the pre-romance before you actually get to the romance? Well, it's because people have this notion that romance makes you ultimately as happy as you can be, and if the characters get together, then nothing else could ever make them sad again, which means the book will be boring. That's a problem for a couple of reasons, but we're not here to discuss that. We're just here to talk about torturing our characters and why we love it. Even if a character starts out a book happy, you'll often notice that that happiness is short-lived. Something big and terrible, some central conflict, will come along and ruin the character's day. Characters need to overcome, characters need to strive, and to do that, they gotta suffer. Let's talk about internal pain first. Pain that comes from the character themselves. Pain that is primarily inside of the, of the character's head. Now, this internal pain can be caused by an external source, such as an impending doom of some kind, relationship issues, whatever you happen to be using to make your character suffer today. This internal pain is either dealt with eventually by the character overcoming it mentally themselves, or by having a great character building moment with a buddy of theirs. Because we love to read those kinds of stories where characters bond over somebody's pain. Now let's talk about external pain, which is something I enjoy all too much, and that is pain that comes from the outside of your character, such as when you break their arm, or knock them off their horse, or make them fall out of a tree, or nearly drown them. I am really mean. Obviously, this kind of pain comes about when your character encounters something physically dangerous, and they get into a scrap with that dangerous thing, and they probably don't win. External pain can sometimes even be used to facilitate your characters coming to terms with their internal pain. It's great, all of this pain, it just messes together into one giant suffering pile, and I love it. External pain is a great way to show your readers that your character is not invincible. Your reader will have a much better time with the story and be much more invested if they are worried for the main character. It's no fun to read a book where you're 100% certain that the main character will be fine, that nothing bad's gonna happen to them, that they're always gonna win every fight because they're such a badass. That's just not as fun to read as a character overcoming a greater threat, probably getting injured along the way, and still managing to win the day. Remember when I told you about fight scenes and how to write them, and how hurting your character will make it a more engaging fight scene? The closer your character comes to losing a fight, both physical and mental, the more engaging and exciting it is for the readers. Now here's the thing about external and internal pain. Both of these things should be there and should matter for more than one scene. This always drives me crazy in books or movies. Let's say your character's going through something. They're really traumatized by an event that just happened. Uh, maybe they had to kill someone. And, they're, uh, and they are very um, understandably shaken up by that. And then, 
two scenes later, it is as though it never happened and doesn't affect them at all. Haha, <laughs> news for you, that's not how trauma works in real life. If you're going to traumatize your characters, and I encourage you to do so, that trauma is going to stick with them. That's going to be part of their life for much of their life. Now, maybe they get better at coping with it, but it's always going to be there. Pain should matter for more than one scene. Again, with external pain. Let's say a character is injured in a fight to make the fight more intense and more engaging. That's great. Oh, they've been injured. Maybe they managed to win and maybe they lost and had to retreat. And then, in the next scene, they're like jumping and climbing around, so unless you're gonna have a giant time jump where they recover, they're gonna have to deal with this physical injury. Which is good. What's that like? Do other characters need to help them? Do they resent that or do they like that? Maybe the love interest gets in there and helps out, you know? Changes the bandages. One thing leads to another. Sexy times. Just remember while they're having these sexy times that they still have injuries and then they should worry about that a little bit. Now naturally, of course, you do not want to be torturing your characters all the time. As fun as that would be, you do have to find a balance. Striking a balance can sometimes be challenging between your character's happiness and your character's misery. That's something that you can play around with a lot in your writing and I don't have a super easy this one size fits all answer for you. So make sure that in your writing you definitely have beta readers or critique partners looking around for the balance of how much you hurt your characters versus how much they're happy. Maybe don't even tell your beta readers that's what they're looking for, but try to gauge it in their responses. One point of pride that I did want to share with you guys, and this is just a random anecdote from me, but as you probably have gathered from this, I love to torture my characters. I'm an asshole. And in my book-length fanfiction, which I'm still fairly proud of, called The New Ways of Old Gods, I have been fairly highly praised by my few readers for my ability to torture these characters. And aside from me killing a few characters that my readers had become attached to and didn't want them to die, people have really been loving my style of torture, essentially. However, and this is a point of pride for me. I did have one reader, they picked up the new ways of old gods. They were kind of communicating with me as they read, which I freaking love. Any writer will tell you, if somebody wants to communicate with you about your work, you eat that up like candy. Anyway, this person was communicating. Every few chapters they would send me another message to tell me what their thoughts were so far. And then they reached a certain point, which was after a very climactic scene, sort of near the middle of the book, where I severely injured a large number of my characters in the battle. They all survived, but many of them were not in good shape. And the tension for the beginning of the book, which had been building and building, was about to break. The tension was about as high as it could go. And my reader comes to me and says, I can't keep reading. This is too intense. And I was like, are you serious with me right now? You're not joking? And they're like, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Apparently this particular reader was sensitive to that much intensity and had to give up on my story. And you know what? Considering it's only one person that had that problem, I prefer to take it as a point of pride. My book was so intense, somebody couldn't handle it. And that is what I strive for when I'm a mean mama to my characters. A level of intensity that's not for the faint of heart. I hope everything is going well. What are some of your favorite ways to torture your characters? Comment below and let me know. And if this seemed too much like bragging to you guys, feel free to rip me a new one in the comment section. That's fine. It's cool. Put me in my place. It's good. Or if you are interested in all of that tension happening, please go check out the New Ways of Old Gods, which is on my AO3 linked below. Remember everyone, I post new videos on Mondays and Fridays slash Saturday whenever my slow ass internet decides to cooperate. And if YouTube is being a butt and not letting you see my latest videos, remember to check out my social media where all of those videos will be posted. Everything you need is in the doobly doo. Don't forget, like, subscribe, blah de blah de blah, you know the drill. And I will see you all again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Happy torturing. <laughs>